Sarah. I'm back in with another fiber creative video. And if the video, if the audio quality is not that great, then it's gonna be music and some more text overlay. So I got a rest a mask on. I got this mask on. So first, I'm gonna use jet black and this is some superwash merino from Nipix. I'll check the label here in a second. And I'm just, so I've been letting this soak for about maybe 20 minutes. And so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let stuff, I'm just gonna do whatever the heck I want. So I just add some black. So we'll kind of, it is stroll, roving bear. And what is it? Unspun roving. 100 grams of oh 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon top uh, 100 grams I tore the label trying to get at everything but so this is just some regular water out of the tap along with some some vinegar that I just added some splooshes earlier and I was letting it soak while I folded some clothes. Still got more clothes to fold, but that's okay. So we're gonna see how this goes. And let me put down some paper towels for my tongs. So I use the jet black. Let's put that over there. And you know what? I want to try some turquoise. See how this goes. Ooh. Yeah, I'm kind of just doing this how I would typically sp speckle some yarn. Look at my previous video and stuff. So that is some turquoise and I'm just gonna Tap it down. I don't know how this is going to come out at all, but I think it's going to be awesome. So, <laughs> I'm creating some speckles on the on the fiber already. And so everything's everything's pretty quiet around here right now. The kiddo's asleep. It is. 12.40 in the morning, because me and the hubs work second shift now. And I'm going to add some silver gray. And all of this is to card acid dyes, which I do have Amazon affiliate links in the description of the dyes and stuff. And I'm hoping to become maybe a nitpicks affiliate at some point in the future. But anyway, if you want the uh, easy link to these specific dyes that I'm using, check the description. You'll find some links down there. So that is some silver gray. And I'm just gonna tap this down and it looks like the best thing about superwash and nylon is that it strikes pretty quickly despite that there's no heat right now the oven is preheating to 350 sometimes I've said in a comment to y'all on reddit who have been asking about different yarns and stuff and I honestly couldn't remember whether I just let the oven heat up with the yarn I did already in there or or if I just uh put it in after it reached the temperature that I wanted. But either works really. So here's some lilac. And add a bit more. And that looks pretty good. 
we'll tap this down and see what's going on. Ooh. Maybe, maybe tap her a bit gentler. Be more gentle, Sarah. But ooh, that looks pretty awesome. Let's see. We've got some, let's go with teal kind of break it up because I have some of the hot fuchsia, which is basically hot pink that I love so much. Hot pink is really one of my favorite colors. And if you're hearing just random stuff, it's like the oven it's heating up. You got the cap doing their thing around there. You actually oh, may have actually seen some of my cats in previous videos just wandering around in the background. They're so cute. I love cats. And that is some dark, dark teal. Just cry all right. Because. Ooh. Yeah, I believe these were the colors that I tried to do originally because I actually did film before I started doing YouTube videos of the um, fiber that became those really super sparkly blue and deep ocean roll eggs that got turned into yarn. Or will get turned into yarn. The deep ocean ones are still in roll like form at this moment. So I like how this is kind of speckling. I'm just gonna, I might have too much dye here, but honestly, that's okay because it's pretty much low immersion, so I'm not terribly worried at all, really, about having it spread too far on me. So, okay, and here we go with our hot fuchsia. I got quite a bit. So, Yeah, that is quite a bit. So, I'm going to tap that down. Oh, that is lovely. I'm glad I haven't really been looking at the camera. Actually, I'm recording with my cell phone. By the way, all of these videos have been recorded with my cell phone because the last and only DSLR camera that I own is literally one that I purchased back in 2007-2008 and in fact that was a camera that I filmed a lot of the um, videos I did originally like that um, rainbow Rolex that currently has about 5,000 views I did about five years ago that one that was an old camera the rest of them have been on various cell phone cell phones that I have but all these now are on cell phone because honestly it's working and you really can't tell because I film in like um was it full HD and and all that good stuff so that is super saturated let's get another paper towel wipe off our tongues and no I'm not wearing gloves but I'm not too I'm not too bothered because I only got a little bit of that in me so let's see we could I think I'm gonna add some more lilac to the center because yeah I did grab a lilac I'm like that doesn't look like lilac, but it is. It is. And silver gray, because I'm going to try to fill in some of the white spots up here. So 
going to tap that down more gently this time. Kind of hoping that this soaks through pretty well, but we'll see. I kind of like how some of the white spots are present because that's going to look pretty cool. And you know what I'll do is I really should be cleaning off the measuring utensil I'm using, but eh, it is what it is. I'm going to add some bright contrasting paint. And my oven says it's ready for fiber. The oven is ready for fiber, it says. Oh, yeah. Might be some dark going on here. And the mask, this mask is going to be fogging up my glasses. But we're all used to that. We're all used to having our glasses all fogged up with the mask requirements. So, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of pink going on in there. That's okay. All right. So, yeah, I got pink, jet black, turquoise, silver gray, though it's kind of hard to tell, but it is lighter than the jet black. Lilac, teal, and a bunch of hot fuchsia, which is basically hot pink, as you can tell. And we're going to go in the oven, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, so I'm back, and it's been about 20 minutes in the oven, and... I don't know if you can see it, but it is actually steaming. And I wish I had like a ring light or something. So, so yeah. But we still got some mosaic going on here. But. move this around right now since it's just not powdered dye and it's all liquid I don't have a respirator on but I have quite a bit of some black going on in there How am I going to do this? It's going to be super interesting on the bottom. And I kind of like that. Like it's, yeah, I probably had like way too much dye in some spots. Oops. But, um, I don't really mind that so much. Just some nice light spots. I'll just move this about a little bit. Yep, so I'm just kind of moving this about, seeing what we're working with. Just kind of 
I want to add any other extra color and spread it about. Because this is going to be super awesome. Looks like most of it is exhausted a little bit. Lost in some spots. Hmm. What I do? So for anything additional, I'm gonna put on my mask again. And. You know what I think would be good? Mm, more purple. We're just going to add a little bit of purple. For black bag specifically. Yeah. Kind of fill in some of the white spots. I'm not opposed to having white spots, but I kind of just want to fill it in with some color. And since the yarn and the fiber specifically is still quite hot, then I might just pop it in the oven again for another 10 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this all off camera and then at a later date when it's dry I will show you the fluffy fluffy results. So let's kind of move that about. It's going to be so interesting to spin. Should I do, well, you know, once I start spinning it and then get it into the single Apply that it is. I think it'll let me determine whether I want to do a two ply or a three ply. I'm kind of leaning towards. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I'll divide it in half and try it both ways. I kind of like doing that. That's what I did for my super sparkly yarn that I spun up that y'all saw. The one where I just reblended more sparkle into it. So, okay, so I'm just gonna pop this in the oven for another 10 or so minutes and see what, and what we're working with. All right, again, I will see you when this is done. Good morning. It is now about over a day and a half later, and this, this is what happened with the dyed fiber. And, oh yeah, this fluffed up so well. And I'm not going to apologize for my kiddo overnight. He's just a happy baby. So yeah, after this is what happened. So when I, when I last stopped filming the other night, I popped it in the oven, let it sit there for about 20 minutes, and then I just turned the oven off and let it cool down in the oven overnight. The next morning, I took it out, gave it a wash, got, and we had just a smidge about bleeding. It was probably that pink, um, that blood just a little bit, but barely anything. And I washed it a good a couple times. So after that, I hung it up to dry in our bathroom, and with it being pretty damp and chilly lately, they, we have the heat running. So while me and husband went to work, and when I last left it there, it was look, looking really wet and sad. So when we got back, it just floofed up like this. And so it's just been hanging there for overnight until this morning. When I wanted to film here in a nice daylight and not too much noise. 
my kiddo is over there playing with this rabbit in his little bouncer. So this is what happened. And this is going to be really fun to spin. I think my plan here is that I'm going to separate it into one big long, two big long strips. And I'll spin one like into a normal single, like how it is pretty well. And I don't know if I'll do a two ply or a three ply. Maybe a three ply. I like three plies because they're just easy and much faster. But then the second strip, I think I'm going to do one of those cool blending deals again. And make a big old bat and add the sparkle. Because you know I'm all about the sparkle. And I got a bunch of sparkle. And this whole series, I'm just trying to use up all like a lot of my um, craft supplies. And I got to get them more organized. That is for darn sure. So I'm just going to start making a slip knot and I'm going to just gonna braid it up. Okay. And <laughs> there's sparkle from other projects just getting over here. I need to clean up. So yeah, I love how the super wash just takes the colors where they are. Because I've actually never um I think the closest thing to Superwash or nylon that I dyed was like a cup, like almost four or five, maybe six years back when I dyed up some faux cashmere and oh, I, I've, I've, the last couple times I've taken a peek to look to see if um, Paradise Fibers has it, they just don't have it. But ooh, I would love some to get some of that again because I, um, I just used food coloring that time because that was my food coloring days. I've since gone on to use, you know, the acid dyes that I feature in my yarn videos and fiber videos. But with my kiddo being getting a little bit older, we're definitely going to be um, trying out some food coloring and stuff if he takes interest in it. So if I forgot anything, I might just drop it in as a as little comments like text in the video but as always I have links in the description I don't have any links to nitpicks like I said I would like to be I might like to um, become an affiliate of theirs in the future but if you want to find these dyes that I used you can check out the description where I have Amazon affiliate links so see you next time bye